I'm gonna play every game on Game Pass. Well, at least the first hour of every game on Game Pass. When I tell you that Game Pass is one of my favorite services, today is a good example of why. We can find some very small indie games that deserve a lot of love, but people just don't get a chance to see them. And that's the case of Anuchart. Anuchart is a top-down 2D adventure puzzle-solving game. I like to call those Zelda-like games. And I'm a Zelda fan myself, so why I wouldn't like this game? But I want to tell you why you will like the game. So come with me, let's check it out on the chart. Once you start the game, you're gonna see this very cute, colorful, stylized cutscene telling you a little bit about Anuchart, this ancient island graced by guardians, and how the guardians are not there anymore to protect the Anushargians. But don't worry, you're gonna come in place very soon. The game starts very strong, throwing you into a combat with a few monsters, and you gotta try to defeat them. I couldn't do it, but I think that's part of the game, because once you get defeated, you wake up at home with your mother, of course, scolding you to get out of the bed. Once you talk to your mom and you get out of your house, you get introduced to the village. The village is going to be the hub of the game, where you go back to collect new items and upgrade your character as you progress in the game. And speaking about progressing, this game tries to appeal to the old-fashioned public. What does that mean? You actually have to save manually your game. Do you remember that time when you have to actually save the game? Go to a place, press save, and then save? You gotta do that here, yeah. One of the main characters of the village is the chief. If you go to the chief's office, that is where you're going to be able to save your progress. And if you go to the chief's house, you're going to notice a little sign in front of his house. That sign will tell you the side missions. And this is a very important thing you have to know. The side missions are time sensitive. What does that mean? That means that if you got a side mission signed up to you, you have a certain period of time to complete that. What happens if you don't do it? Well, you're probably not gonna get a reward for it, but we all want the reward, right? Once you explore a little bit the village, you're gonna finally start your adventure going by the main hall. In the main hall, you're gonna get your first weapon, the bell. You are now the bell wither. Ta-da! Once you get your bell, you're also gonna get your three new companions, Dali, Bimba, and Mag. And I'm gonna tell you, these three are hilarious. You gotta check it out their dialogues. They are incredibly funny. But not only they are funny, they're gonna assist you in your new adventure. So they're gonna give you hints and tips on how to progress in the game. Speaking of progressing the game, there's a few points that I wanna make here. First one, the storytelling is very, very simple. I would say almost childlike. And I think that is fantastic because it's accessible for everyone out there. Another highlight of the progression of the game, to me, is how they separate the progression in chapters. Reading a book, for example, and I see how far I am into that book. In the game, I see how far I am into the game, and I really appreciate that. After you get your bell, you're finally ready to go for your first dungeon. You're gonna need a memento, but I'm not gonna mention too much about that because I don't want to spoil the game. But with the memento and your bell, you go for your first dungeon and your adventure actually begins. If you are familiar with Zelda games, you're going to be familiar with this game as well, especially when you're in a dungeon, with little puzzles for you to solve, some different monsters with different types of attacks that you're going to have to adapt to if you want to progress in the game. But don't worry, if you still think the game is difficult to you, the game offers accessibility options. In this case, you can reduce the damage you take from the enemies by 50% or even 100% making you invincible if you just want to enjoy the story and the cutesy art style. Oh, speaking of the cute art style, you will love that the characters don't have facial expression. However, they use like little emoticons balloons to express what they're feeling and I find that extremely charming. Look! Now imagine that I was using the same style. Look at this! Look at the balloon! <laughs> About the combat itself, it's very simple. You have a light attack and a heavy attack. At least those are the only two that I had a chance to experience while in the first hour of the game. You're probably gonna get more stuff as you progress. 
One thing that I noticed about the heavy attack is that it also works as a dodge. I find confusing that the dodge and heavy attack share the same button. But I'm gonna tell, sometimes it works, you know, you're trying to dodge and bang, you hit the enemy. Well, if it works, it works. Something else you're gonna find also inside the dungeon is the little pieces of tutorial explaining to you what everything in that word means. Sometimes I find that redundant. For example, the game will stop and give you a tutorial. Hey, this is how you attack. And on the same stage, you're gonna find a sign that tells you what you just learned. Not a deal breaker. At the end of the dungeon, of course, you're gonna find a boss and of course, every boss is gonna be a different challenge for you. And it's very cute when you defeat them because look, look at that. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Look at that pose. Oh, she got it. I don't want to spoil too much, but at the end of every single dungeon, you're also going to get something. And then when you go back to the village, you're going to notice some things change. And you can, for example, improve your village after you progress a little bit. So keep an eye open to the village at all times. Another highlight of this game that I cannot let it slide is the music. You know exactly when you are at home and safe with this. Or when something very fun is about to happen, like because of this sound. Or even when some things will be a little bit more serious and, well, get some tissue because you might tear up. The music overall is incredible in this game and I think they nailed it in the soundtrack. And now that you're back to me, this is a Zelda-like game. Remember, I mentioned that at the beginning. So of course there will be vases for you to break and of course there will be secret walls for you to find. So explore everything you can carefully so you'll discover all the secrets available. Alright, so just to recap why I think you should play this game. This game has a cute art style, this story is very funny, engaging and very simple, very accessible for everybody. The combat system is also very simple and easy to learn. And the soundtrack, I'm going to mention again, they nailed the soundtrack. I really couldn't find any reason not to play this game, but if I have to say just one, just, just to put one here, I would say that the heavy attack and dodging being on the same button is a little bit of a turn off for me, but not a deal breaker. Now, based on everything that I said, do you think you would play the game? Leave a comment down below and let me know if you would play this game or not. Or even better, is there any other game that you want me to review on Game Pass? And just before I leave, do not forget that I'm also a streamer on Twitch. I stream every Mondays and Fridays at 4 p.m. EST. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you soon and bye.